Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, people, we're going to talk about this brother by the name of Ismael Brinsley and the way he crashed out in the year of 2014. He went all out. And one thing that a lot of people don't like to admit or they don't like to say is the fact that many people appreciate crash outs like Ismael Brinsley and people who do things like Ismael Brinsley did. A lot of people don't like to say it or talk about it, and I understand this is something that many people keep to themselves. Some people don't, okay? And this latest situation with the sister Sonia Massey in Springfield, Illinois, is proof and is a reason why. Now, who Ismael Brinsley is, we got to take it back to the year of 2014. Um, and since we could never hear from him, since we could never hear from Ismael Brinsley, this is who he is, okay, and what happened. Now, he was born in Brooklyn, New York, but he was raised in the Atlanta, Georgia area, okay? And Ismael Brinsley, he lived all around many different places, different states and things like that. Now, they say that he has some mental issues coming up. They say that they have his mother saying that he always had some kind of mental things going on in his life and things like that or whatever. And then there are other people who say things like, you know, he was just a great guy whenever they were around him and things like that. So he was 28 years of age now when he really went all out. And what he did was he gunned down two NYPD guys in 2014 when they were sitting in their car eating lunch at around 2.30 p.m. Okay, he gunned both of them down. Now, they claim that Ismael Brinsley did this in response to the unjust killings of Michael Brown and Eric Garner. Uh, they say that Ismael Brinsley was pissed off, and he said, okay, well, I'm going to do this. Now, before Ismael Brinsley gunned down these two NYPD dudes, um, which he claims is vigilante justice again for the Michael Brown and Eric Garner situation, he went on Instagram, and he uploaded an image of a gun with the caption, I'm putting wings on pigs today. They take one of ours, let's take two of theirs. And then, hashtag shoot the police, hashtag RIP Eric Garner, RIP Mike Brown, and he wrote, this may be my final post. Uh, after that, he went and he shot two of these NYPD officers, took them both out as they sat in the car eating lunch, they said. That's what the story says. Now, there are some people who do not believe that Ismael Brinsley did this. Many people did do believe he did it. I guess that would be because of what's in the news. And, you know, whatever is in the news, most of us are going to read it, break it down and think, OK, do I believe it or not? Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But uh, I do think that it's understood that Ismael Brinsley did possibly have some mental illnesses going on. Um, again, he's from Brooklyn. Rough criminal past, raised in Atlanta. Uh, he's been arrested 15 times in Georgia, four times in Ohio. And he was one of them guys who was often on social media showing off his clothes, you know, making different posts about things, money, fashion. He dressed really nice. Uh, and they say he also used social media to spread his anti-government rhetoric. That's what they say. They say that his mother said that he was a violent child and that she was also scared of him. Uh, Ismael Brinsley's mother said that he suffers from mental illness and he once tried to kill himself by hanging prior to the year that he shot these two NYPD cops. So that would be in the year 2013. And uh, the, the day that he did this to these NYPD cops, people, the day that he did this, Ismael Brinsley, they say that he went to the Baltimore suburb called Owens Mills. Went up there to Owens Mills. Uh, he had an ex-girlfriend out there. He went to her apartment. He got into an argue, argument with her. I believe they say it was about the fact that he had a key fob to get in. 
He wasn't supposed to have it anymore because they had broke up. He had some words with her, shot her in the stomach. After that, um, he hops on the bus, on the boat bus, takes her phone, and then hops on the boat bus. I'm sorry. And they said that when he, after he took her phone, he called her mother to apologize about what he did as he's on the bus heading up to New York. Okay, now, if Ismael Brinsley did this to this young lady, I believe he's a nutcase, and that's the worst thing that I've heard that he did that's sick. And for doing that, for shooting a young lady in the stomach just because you had an argument with her or she doesn't want to be with you anymore, if that's the case, uh, and if he did call her mother and apologize, yeah, he needs to you know, be taken out of here for that. You can't do that, man. I don't care who you are. You just can't go shooting a woman because you're mad. So maybe he did have some really bad mental illness or whatever. You know what I mean? So as he's going up New York on the boat, on the boat bus, he gets to the Barclays Center, takes the phone that he took from his girlfriend, throws the phone away, they say. Then he made his way. He's seen the two Brooklyn cops sitting in the car around 2.30 p.m. Boom. Took both of them out. Took them both out. Uh, and as a result of that, as a result of him taking these two cops out, President Obama signed the Blue Alert Law, and he named um, this Blue Alert Law in these officers' names after Ismail Brinsley took them out. Pretty fast response, huh? Yeah, pretty fast response by the president at that time. Barack Obama. But uh, anyway, so here's the thing with Ismael Brinsley, people. Maybe he did this. Some people believe that he did. Some people believe that he didn't. There have been some conspiracy theorists who have chimed in and gave their point as to why they do not believe that Ismael Brinsley really did this to these two cops. But I don't have enough information to discredit these conspiracy theorists, or to call them crazy, so I will not try. I think that he did it, okay, but I'm not going to debate that fact. You have some conspiracy people who are like, no, he didn't do this. I haven't heard enough from his mother, his family, or the girlfriend that he shot. If that's the truth, I think it is, though, you know? I'm just getting the information, you know, repeating it, and just seeing what parts of it I believe or what I believe can be true. I do believe that a lot of this is true, you all. Um, you have people who knew Ismael Brinsley. They said that he was a great guy. They'd been around him. They were friends with him. He was always traveling to various states, you know, California, New York, Atlanta, Ohio, Maryland, you know, Brooklyn. He had a child in Brooklyn as well. His past seems pretty weird uh, because as, as violent as they say he was, I didn't see any violent things going on. A lot of petty crime, theft type stuff, cruddy crimes, things like that. He spent a lot of time uh, sleeping on people's couches and things like that, you know what I mean? Getting put out, not having a stable place to live or employment. But, you know, having money and getting on social media when he does with nice clothes and things like that. So this whole Ismael Brinsley situation, it really puzzles me. But here's the elephant in the room, people, and this is what a lot of people don't like to discuss or even talk about about this situation with Ismael Brinsley uh, pushing these two cops in the year of 2014, these two NYPD dudes. He said that he was putting wings on pigs. And actually, many people in America appreciate Ismael Brinsley for his crash out and what he did. There are many people who believe that Ismael Brinsley is a hero because they believe that, yes, he did do this to these two cops and they appreciate it. A lot of people appreciate it silently. Now, they don't like to say it, but the back and forth that black people have with the police is never going to stop. There are black people who just love when they see cops getting pushed. There are white people and white cops who love when cops push black people. Uh, there are a lot of white people who love when the cops get pushed, you know. And this happened in tw 2014. At the time when Ismael Brinsley did this, of course, besides the situation with Eric Garner and Michael Brown, there were other situations where the police did shoot and take the lives of black women, black children, black men, lost their uh, lives to law enforcement unjustly. OK, 
So there are many people who really just like to see the same thing happening to law enforcement. And I'm talking about black people. Of course, it's going to be uh, a lot of black people because black people have the most messed up and oppressive relationship with law enforcement. That's just how it is. Uh, and many people, they just hate the police and they don't care what happens, you know. And that's due to deal the abusive and tyrannical acts that law enforcement in America has been doing for hundreds of years and getting away with it. It's not about the fact that they enforce the law, people. It's not the fact that they enforce the law, okay? Of course, nobody wants to get in trouble for what they do, but it's the fact that law enforcement breaks the law quite often to enforce the law, and at the same time, they're doing other things to break the law, like selling the drugs and R-wording women and doing things like that and lying on reports, going to um, court and lying on people. People are losing their jobs, making their, uh, you know, hardships in their lives like that, things like that. Because here's the thing. Even when somebody breaks the law, there was a law that law enforcement has to follow. And if they violate that, they become just as bad, if not worse, than the person who has broke the law. OK. And to be honest, people, the thing here is a lot of people appreciate the crash outs like Ismael Brinsley and what he did for these reasons. Now, of course, when it comes to law enforcement, people have black people. I'm, I'm speaking of black people in general. Of course, white people are including, included in this as well. But uh, most black people do not like the police, do not like law enforcement, and many white people don't. Uh, many black people, we have relatives, friends, or people that we care about who may be police officers or, and are in some form of law enforcement. But even with that being said, most people don't even care or like law enforcement or the police. They only care about their people who are in law enforcement. So it's like, okay, I don't care what they do to any cops out there. Just don't touch my cousin. Don't touch my brother. Don't touch my sister, my dad. Leave them alone. Okay, I get it. They out there, but I don't care about the police, but leave my people alone. And that's the general feeling that a lot of black people have when it comes to law enforcement. They really don't care. They only care about their people who may be in that field of law enforcement. And if you happen to be out there and something happens, that comes with the territory, okay? That that protection... Uh, that people want for their people who are in the field of law enforcement, it does not extend to the rest of the force. And that's just the way it is. Now, I'm be honest with you. Actually, when you are in law enforcement, you don't even care about your coworkers. Um, if they something happened to them or whatever, unless you like them. That's just the way it is. I've been in law enforcement before. It's a bunch of lies and fake stuff going on. And people, you know, with, you know, with a lot of uh, fake beliefs about what they think it is. But, I mean, it is what it is. Even when you're in law enforcement, you don't really care about guys that you work with. You only you have your few people who you like, who you may consider friends or people that you don't want nothing to happen to. And anything past that, you don't care. Other than that, a lot of people don't mind when they see folded flags and bagpipes playing and things like that. A lot of people applaud that and they appreciate crash outs like Ismael Brinsley just based off of what just happened in Springfield, Illinois with the sister. Sonia Massey, okay? It's like, okay, you did that, so we did that. You did that, so somebody's going to get you for that. And it's going to go on and on. But, of course, law enforcement is always going to win because they do this quite often more than anybody and nothing happens. You know, it just ain't going to balance out because they can get away with that. Now, here's a white man named Dimitri, right? This, this guy, Dimitri, here, after Ismael Brinsley did what he did, Look, look at what this white man right here said. He said, I pray for millions of heroes, more heroes like Brinsley. I am a veteran and will find more victims of the NYPD to make sure we have the highly trained. Unfortunately, Brinsley wasn't since he was a civilian, but he still deserves a medal of honor. People, we need to make a nice plan of action against these oppressive Disgusting animals that destroy lives daily and live to screw regular honest citizens so they can become criminals for real. Can't wait to read the news about another Brinsley that has enough of the disgusting 
animals that prey on our kids. No one deserves it more than the corrupt NYPD pigs. And that's how this man feels, y'all. That's a white man. And that's how he feels. And I read it because he's white, because I don't want them, you know, to put that on none of our people, because he can actually say things like that and write things like that because he's white. Okay? Now, those are his feelings. He said it. But there are many people who would agree with what he said. Okay? Many people will agree with what he said. They kill, they take lives, hurt people, screw people's jobs up, lives, uh, terrorize children, you know, put people in positions where they got to go to court, they can't feed their children, they prey on kids, sell drugs. I mean, it's the truth. This has happened throughout our history, okay? And here's the kicker to it. A lot of people, you know, they say things like, well, there are some guys, there are many guys who are out there just to do their job. They're good people, and they want to enforce the law. This is true. This is true. I've been around many guys in law enforcement before, but here's the thing, and here's what I also know to be true, okay? When this oppression and this corruption happens, these unjust killings, these cover-ups, these planting drugs on people, these other things that aren't supposed to be done, these pulling people over without having probable cause just to case them up. When these other good people in law enforcement know about it and they hear about it, they don't do anything to stop it. OK, they don't do anything to stop it. So that's why people don't care which cop or which person in law enforcement gets hit or which ones are victims of crash outs like Ismael Brinsley. That's why people don't care, because I know for a fact that even the good cops, the people who do the right thing and go to, and go to work and do what they're supposed to do, for the most part, 90% of them, when they see this oppression and corruption and these crimes against humanity, as good as people they are, guess what? They want their check and they don't say anything and they turn a blind eye to it. And until that stops, you know, that's when I think that people will change their minds because it becomes a them and a us thing. And that's just the reality, people. That's the truth. Contrary to what you may, may want to believe or how you may want to feel about your loved one who's in law enforcement. I've been in law enforcement before. Uh, uh, your loved one who's a cop who you don't want nothing to happen to. Listen, I don't want nothing to happen to none of my people either who may happen to be in law enforcement. Anybody that I care about, I understand you. But the truth and the reality is that it comes down to this team and this team. Because when this corruption and this oppression and his unjust killings happen, and your people who you know is typically a good person who is just on the job to do their thing, when they see this, 90% of the time, they're going to turn a blind eye to it and get their check and keep it moving. So I'm just expressing what it is, people. They're going to, people are going to feel how they want to feel, but that's just what it is. Now, this Ismael Brinsley, I don't know if you heard of this story before. Maybe you have, but I want to ask people, what do you think about this Ismael Brinsley situation? Do you think that he actually did this? So, again, there were at the time that this happened, there were quite a few conspiracy theorists. Could have been some conspiracy truths to what they were saying. You know, but I know that Obama did sign a bill to protect these police officers right after he did it. How do you feel about this situation? How do you feel about what Ismael Brinsley did? I think that the thing that he did up in uh, Owens Mills, in Baltimore, if he actually did that and shot this girl in the stomach, I, you know, that's enough for me. I believe that's a terrible, horrible thing, you know, for him to do, to do that. But as far as these two cops and pushing them, I know their families are sad about that. But a lot of people really look at Ismail Brinsley as a hero. Anyway, people get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Easy.